Good morning, Dale here from Verbeck Animal Health. I have Dr. Hensi Lotokhan here with us. He's going to just give us a reminder on the best practices of dosing and injecting your animals to ensure that we get the best out of whatever remedy we are using. So over to Hensi. All right, thanks, Dale. Let's get started. Good morning. We are going to look at injecting sheep today. But before we start, there's a few things we must keep in mind. The first is different remedies have different injection sites and also different dosages. So we need to know the weight of the sheep in, in order to work out the correct dosage. Um, secondly, um, we need to know the, where to inject. Is it subcutaneous under the skin or intramuscular into the muscle? And thirdly, we must know the withdrawal time. When is it safe to use the meat or the milk again? And in order to do that, we have to read the instructions first. And every drug should have a package insert which gives you all the relevant information about how much, where to inject, and what the, the remedy is effective against. If you don't have the package insert, most of the time it will also be on the box. You can also make sure of how to use the drug directly on the box. Um, when we inject sheep, we have to realize that there are different injection sites and there are different drugs. Some are more viscose than others and for that, that will influence the type and the length of needle that we use. There are also drugs that may stay in the wool, so for that we we'll try and use a longer needle. Um, the sites where we inject sheep is either under the skin or intramuscular. And um, for intramuscular we normally use a slightly longer needle than for subcutaneous. Here we have some examples of different types of needles. This one at one side here is a 16 gauge half an inch needle, the shortest. The middle one is a one inch needle, 20 gauge. And this one on the other side is a one inch 18 gauge needle. The, so it's from short to, to, to long. This you use for intramuscular, these two for subcutaneous. Um, and the gauge is the thickness of the needle. So it works in this way that the higher the gauge, the thinner the needle, and the lower the gauge, the thicker the needle. When we get to the equipment, always make sure that your equipment is in good working order, that you've got enough sharp needles to use, and when filling up the syringe, make sure that you get rid of all the air bubbles inside. So I've chosen a little bit a longer needle, a three-quarter inch needle, to make sure that we don't get leakage. The fact that we see staining and we, it may come from leakage shows us that even all the other products that we inject, we may also have a problem with leaking, like your vaccines. If you only inject one cc and you lose a few drops, you're not getting the full dose. So rather go for a slightly longer needle and do a proper job. Limit not a race. We don't want to do it fast, we want to do it properly. So we're going to try and fill this up and get rid of all the bubbles if I can show you. For intramuscular injection, there are three places where we can inject. The one is also in the neck, halfway between the jaw and the start of the shoulder. Remember, the vertebrae is at the bottom here. At the top, there is the tendon that keeps the head up. So you want to go into the middle part of the neck and the middle here. So if you draw two lines, one in the middle here, one in the middle there, it's more or less there. There is a small area there that you can inject. It's sometimes difficult in use because they've got very thin necks and not a lot of muscle. So for them, we normally use it at a different site. But in rams, this will work, and in bigger use, it will also work. Um, the second place is on the rump here. And you feel for the tip of the, this wing of the hip pelvic bone here. In that first third, there's quite a big muscle that you can use. And in use, I try and go more or less two fingers behind that wing of the hip and um, 
insert the needle there and then before you inject always aspirate because in this when you inject in the muscle you may inject into a vein so always aspirate to see if there's no blood coming out and then you can inject and put pull the needle out rub it a bit so that the drug stays inside that's the second place where we can inject the third place which is slightly more difficult um, is in the stick muscle in the back here and we inject from the back important to remember there are two muscles here and you can very easily go in between you can actually feel the the split between the two muscles here so when you inject here about again halfway between the, the pin bone and the, and the um, stifle you must go into one of those two muscles don't go in between the two muscles and you just inject from the back into the but the sheep may kick and it's slightly more difficult.